about how to approach an undifferentiated emergency patient. So when we get a patient, right, and we don't know exactly what is the problem in the patient, how do we approach? What is the first thing which we see in the patient, right? Now, what is the goal of our initial assessment? We have two goals. First, we have to promptly identify any life threats which the patient has and we have to stabilize. We have to prevent that life threats to cause casualty. And we have to assess every system and do the treatment of any life threat of every system. Okay. So how do we approach a patient who has come to emergency and we don't know exactly what is the problem of the patient? The first thing which you do in such kind of patient is see whether the patient is conscious or unconscious. So first thing what we do, we see the consciousness of the patient. Consciousness of the patient. So, if the patient is unconscious, right, if the patient is unconscious, that is, you tried to talk with the patient and patient didn't respond. So, patient is unconscious. So, for unconscious patient, what is the approach? It is BLS approach, basic life support approach, which we will discuss in detail in the subsequent video. Basic life support approach. That is, we have to see the pulse and breathing of the patient and we have to assess whether the patient is in cardiac arrest or not further. Okay. But if the patient is conscious, that is what we will discuss in this video. The BLS approach we will discuss in the subsequent video. So, if the patient is conscious, okay. So, what would be the approach in a conscious pa patient? Conscious patient, the approach is we will go for primary assessment primary assessment. What is the primary assessment? The What is the goal of primary assessment? That is what I just now told you. The goal of primary assessment is to promptly identify the life threats and provide a stabilization. Right, patient is conscious talking with you. What do we do in the primary assessment? For primary assessment, we do something called A, B, C, D, E to trauma or to non-trauma patient. Non-trauma patient. Both. For all patient, we do A, B, C, D, E. Okay. After doing the primary assessment, A, B, C, D, E, we do something called secondary assessment. Secondary assessment. So, what is the use of secondary assessment? Secondary assessment is done to find the cause why the patient has landed up in this emergency situation. So, secondary assessment is cause finding assessment. Primary assessment is initial stabilization and managing of the life threats. In unconscious patient, we go for basic life support approach and we are doing the patient resuscitation if the patient is in cardiac arrest. Uh, then we go for primary assessment and then we go for secondary assessment. So, in any exam question, if an emergency patient has been described in the question, the first thing you have to look in the question whether the patient is conscious or unconscious. If the patient is unconscious, then always what is the first thing we do? We do, we check the pulse and breathing. That is, we go for basic life support of the patient, right? This is the basic life support approach. That is to check the pulse and breathing. And if the patient is conscious, if the patient is conscious, then we go for primary assessment, which I will just discuss in a while. That is A, B, C, D approach. And after completion of the primary assessment, we try to find the cause. That is secondary assessment, the cause finding tool, secondary assessment. Got it? So, this should be the approach of an undifferentiated emergency patient. So, let us talk how do we do the primary assessment. Primary assessment is A, B, C, D, E approach. What does A stands for? A stands for airway. What does B stand? B stands for breathing. What does C stand? C stands for circulation. D for disability, which we have to check. And E, exposure. Remember guys, very clear in your mind. 
if the person is conscious we have a b c d approach that is airway breathing circulation disability and exposure if the patient is unconscious we have a c a b approach that is if patient is unconscious in cardiac arrest we have to start with chest compression so the approach is c a b there compression right compression is the first thing what we start but if patient is conscious not in cardiac arrest the approach is a b c d e approach got my point so what does a stands for a stands for airway airway threats can be life threatening so immediately we have to assess the airway so how do i assess the airway i try to talk to my patient if patient is talking it's a good sign patient will be able to maintain the airway if someone is talking his airway is maintained when patient is not talking then we have to see the gcs of the patient well you have to assess the airway for two things one for any obstruction and other for aspiration if the patient is talking he can maintain both the airway that is his airway is also unobstructed and he is conscious enough to prevent aspiration but if he is not talking we have to assess for any obstruction and also we have to see whether the patient can can protect his airway from aspiration or not so if the patient is unconscious then we have to see the gcs if the gcs is less than 9 or nowadays even less than 10 we intubate we secure the airway why to prevent aspiration so here i am securing the airway to prevent aspiration and if patient cannot phonate then it is obstruction of the airway it's a significant airway emergency then in that case also we have to intubate most probably we have to secure the airway got my point now in trauma patient what could be the airway life threats we have to see the face and neck of the patient and we have to look for any hematoma or edema any nasopharyngeal bleeding etc which can trickle down and cause aspiration we have to see if any tracheal injury crepitus etc will be seen so in trauma patient little bit more we have to assess for trauma causing any airway threat and in trauma patient if i have to intubate right what should be the important things that we have to keep in mind we have to keep in mind to keep the cervical spine of the patient immobilized and we have to keep it immobilized to prevent any cervical instability so always remember if you have to open the airway of a trauma patient you always do jaw thrust okay you don't do the head tilt and chin lift we have to keep the cervical spine immobilized and if you intubate a cervical spine injury patient you go for manual in line stabilization manual in line stabilization and endotracheal intubation and orotracheal rather i should write we go for oral approach orotracheal intubation in emergency orotracheal intubation got my point so manual in line stabilization and orotracheal intubation so any patient with cervical spine injury road side has an airway obstruction and you have to intubate we go for manual in line stabilization and orotracheal intubation and if i have to open the airway in these patient we go for jaw thrust so this is how we manage the airway so we have managed the airway airway is clear maybe i have to put the tube i have put the tube and patient can will not aspirate i will have checked if it was that patient could aspirate i have again put the tube okay so airway i have managed now i have to see for the breathing of the patient right we have to see for the breathing of the patient in airway management what is the management what i already told you intubation cervical spine instability always we have to think that difficult airway can be there so we have to be prepared we have to keep ourselves prepared for tracheostomy and all surgical airway okay now once airway is secured we have to think about breathing how do i assess the breathing i listen for the breath sound right i look for the respiratory effort of the patient and i calculate the respiratory rate and attach a pulse oximeter and and see the oxygen saturation what could be the pulmonary life threats if it's a trauma patient it could be pneumothorax it could be flail chest hemothorax right chest x ray is not a priority first we have to stabilize and then manage any of these condition should be diagnosed on the basis of clinics clinical diagnosis should be done with the help of history of the patient 
Got it? So chest X-ray is never a priority. It can never send a patient for chest X-ray if there is suspect of any pulmonary life threat. First, we have to manage it. So third thing is circulation. Next is circulation. So how do I assess the circulation? C for circulation. I see the color of the patient, whether the patient is pale, cyanosed, whatever. Then level of consciousness. If patient is in hypotension, the consciousness would be less. Then we can check for the capillary refill time. We can see any external bleeding in the patient. We can feel for the peripheral pulse and we can calculate the, uh, we can just, uh, uh, let's say, measure the blood pressure of the patient and count the pulse of the patient. So we can monitor pulse and breathing of the patient. What could be the circulatory threats which we should think about in any patient with undifferentiated patient? We can, we look for hemorrhagic shock, patient may be in shock or tension pneumothorax or maybe cardiac tamponade, right? These are the circulatory threats. Okay, so we have to make diagnosis of the circulatory threat and we have to manage accordingly. Okay, so what could be the management? If it is a hypovolemic shock and I can see some external bleeding, I may apply a direct pressure and try to control the bleeding. I would take an IV line and start the fluid, right? So these are the emergency management of circulation. IV fluid, I can stop the bleeding of the patient and maybe I'll shift an ultrasound and see for any free fluid in the peritoneum. And if there is some free fluid in the peritoneum, I may have to take the patient for laparotomy, etc. Maybe some abdominal bleed happening, continuous abdominal bleed happening in the patient. So I have to look for the circulatory life threats in C. Okay. Then comes D. What is D? Disability. Now, disability means we have to see the central nervous system, assess the CNS of the patient. Right. That all these life threat has caught how much impairment of the brain. So, how do I see the level of consciousness? There are two ways. One very simple that is called AVPU. Now, recently in exam they asked simply, what is the full form of D of ABCD in an approach to an undifferentiated emergency patient? So, D is for disability. They can ask, what does A stand for AVPU? Well, I assess the disability by AVPU. How? A stands for to see whether the patient is alert or not. V stands for whether the patient responds to voice or not. P stands for that whether the patient respond to pain or not. And U stands for that patient is unresponsive. So you are seeing that patient is alert, then it is A of AVPU. Patient is eyes are closed, but when you call his name, he is responding to voice. Now, when you are giving some pain stimulus, patient is, let's say, responding to pain or patient is simply unresponsive. So, this is the level of consciousness AVPU. GCS, the Glasgow Coma Scale, you know how to calculate GCS. Okay, we see the eye response, the motor response and the vocal response of the patient. Right, then we see the pupillary function of the patient. Right, and to assess the maybe some, say, uh, some uh, intracranial threat has happened to the patient. We check the glucose of the patient and we see the extremity movement of the patient, whether the patient is moving all the four extremity or not in disability. Now, if through disability, what are the things which we can suspect? What are the lot of neurological life threats? We can airway threats by B, we try to diagnose the oxygenation threat of the pulmonary threat of the life threats by C, circulatory life threats. And by disability, we are trying to diagnose the neurological life threats. So what can be the neurological life threats of the patient? Any penetrating cranial injury or intracranial hemorrhage like SDH, EDH, subarachnoid hemorrhage or IVH or some spinal cord injury has happened to the patient. The patient may be a trauma patient. These kind of things can be can happen. So by history and by let's say examining, I can try to uh, make a diagnosis of these life threats and maybe we can get an investigation once the patient is stabilized. So this is D. How we manage? If GCS is less than 9, we intubate and we do the supportive care. We get an NCCT done and manage according to the life threat. So D done. Now coming on E, that is exposure. We remove all the clothes of the patient from head to toe and try to see for any bleeding or anything. But the removal of clothes should be done very carefully to avoid any hypothermia. Then we have to do a complete head to toe examination. Even axilla and perigium should be examined for any hemorrhage or all. 
we have to examine the back of spine and head and neck of the patient, right? Everything. So by exposure, we examine the patient in total to find any clue why the patient has landed up in this situation. Got it? Okay. So this is A, B, C, D, E. A initial approach to a undifferentiated emergency patient, right? So this is how we approach and try to manage all the life threat and try to save the life of the patient. Thank you.